This is Dave Meltzer with Entrepreneurs the Playbook, and I got an entrepreneur for you. He is Ken Cohn. He's the CMO of an extraordinary company, CBDMD, and it, it, he's the CMO of that company with over 25 years, which I love, of marketing experience. In other words, how to build a brand, how to create a frequency, how to be authentic in a fast-growing, fast-paced industry of CBD. Ken, welcome to the playbook. Thanks for having me. Good. Well, you know, I'm going to start on the experience of marketing. Because I believe that sales and marketing uh, is a skill and that as we develop that skill throughout our careers, we can apply it to a variety of different things. I started my career in law, but my specific skill set, even within the law, was sales and marketing because I was a litigator. And I went through, you know, internet with uh, legal research online to wireless proxy server space and hundreds of millions of dollars being raised to being the CEO of the world's first smartphone to then marketing the biggest names in sports and entertainments, charities, events with Lee Steinberg, as you know. And then, of course, Warren Moon and I taking that skill to the next level. I see your career very similar that you have harnessed and focused in that capability of building a brand and finding a frequency what have you learned are the best skills and the best lessons in order to build a brand? Well, for, first of all, you know, whether it's this company um, or, or, or frankly, any company is really getting to understand uh, the category. It's understanding your consumers, understanding what your niche really needs to be. Where are you going to stand out? What are your points of difference? Um, it's something we spend a lot of time talking about in our space. Why? Why do we do that? Incredibly cluttered. So, you know, think, think about this for a second. The, the good news is, uh, you know, going into 2019 after the Farm Bill, there were, they said, you know, research would tell you 1,500 companies pitching something that is CBD related, right? So that's the good news. So the bad news is there's 1,500 companies pitching something that has CBD in it. So it's good news, bad news. Here's, here's where we looked at it. How are we going to carve out a niche in a space that's incredibly cluttered, right? And so we, we kind of took the path less travel, so to speak. And we really decided um, in 2019 to use sports and fitness as a bit of a halo for a brand like us in the health and wellness category, which is really what we're about, right? So we take a step back, we're in the health and wellness category. How are we going to stand out in this cluttered environment? And so very early on in my time here, we started accumulating strategic assets that we believed would allow us to stand out. Now you fast forward to the end of last year and we were number one in unaided brand awareness and unaided reach and unaided um, ability in terms of reach and volume. So we hit all these great metrics that told us that we were doing the right thing in 2019 to get on the map. So that's kind of where we started in terms of building the brand. You know, it's interesting because you said the good news about a crowded space, which a lot of people, they hate competition. And I always say, you know, give me competition because my job is to be the best. I can make myself equal and then make myself better. Allow those 1,500 other companies or so to pay for and educate the market. Because in the end, when a market's educated, which is a huge issue for your space, is just the education of the market and the diminishing of certain, you know, clouds and interference that have been created through decades and decades of misinformation about CBD in general, that they're paying for your brand to elevate. And, you know, are there any other positive aspects of a crowded space uh, for your company? Well, listen, because there were 1500 brands, no matter where you turned as a consumer, you were more than likely going to hear about this thing called CBD. So to me, that was the best good news of all, is that everybody was kind of bringing the tidal wave up as it relates to CBD. What, what our job was, was to separate ourselves and become the trusted brand. It was all about credibility. And so, you know, starting with being uh, a New York Stock Exchange company, that's a, that's a very critical point of separation. Then you start aligning yourselves with the Bubba Watsons of the world, and at the time, the big three, and Lolo Jones, and Bellator, and Barstool, and Rogan, right? So I, I mentioned that we wanted to use sports as a halo. All of these strategic assets 
get us on the map and give us a point of difference in the marketplace. And then it's about the messaging and the education so that we build the trust that's critical. Yeah. And along those lines, you're only missing one key, what I call bug light to your brand, because you, you like I, am a devoted Browns fan, Indian fans, Cavaliers fan, Buckeye fan for Ohio State. So you're missing, you know, Dave Meltzer and Swenson's in there as far as big fans of CBD MD, because I am having you on here because you are one of my favorite entrepreneurs that is a Buckeye like me and have been tortured for over 50 years with the list of names. Other than the Cavaliers, we've had just a moment of success in the Buckeyes, but those other teams are driving me crazy. How do you use you know, those great bug lights? Because it's a strategy that obviously I've used for years on both sides of the fence, working for Lee Steinberg and Warren Moon, but how much do those names mean? Not just credibility, but the attraction to that audience. Great question. And yes, I've, I've, uh, at my age, I have certainly waited a long time for my uh, beloved Browns to show me some success. They came close in the 80s, um, but uh, we all know how that ended. Uh, <laughs> so does Ernest Miner. <laughs> right. Yeah. Thank God for LeBron. Um, so, so, you know, it, it's interesting. The, as, those assets do different things for us in different ways. So what do I mean by that? Let's start with Bubba for a second. So Bubba was, was kind of our first signature signing. Why golf? Why Bubba? Um, and we did have actually some other golfers that were part of our portfolio, but he took us to the, to the next level. And so, you know, why golf? If you look at the data, Data would, and I always come back to write the data, the insights to, to build the brand. The data would tell us that the, uh, the number one sport of interest among those in the financial space, the banking space, right? Remember, New York Stock Exchange Company is PGA golf. And it's, it's, a, it's a factor significantly higher than the other sports, even the NFL, right? And so we took a step back and said, hey, if, if we're going to want to connect with that audience, we really want to look at something like golf. We got word back through, through our sources that um, Bubba was taking CBD and it was part of his lifestyle. And apparently, according to his doctor, when we spoke to him, his doctor was bombarded on a weekly basis by people in the CBD space trying to get it, not just in front of Bubba, but all of the folks that, that he was servicing as, as a physician kind of on the tour. And he said, all right, tell me what's different about you. We went through that story. We got him our project and said, here, here's what I'm going to do. Um, and, 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 and part of it's the, the unique nature of CBD. It takes three to four weeks to bind with your endocannabinoid system. I don't want to get too geeky, but the point is, is unlike aspirin, unlike Tylenol, et cetera, it takes time to uh, deliver an impact. And he knew that. And he said, so give me three to four weeks to use your product. I want to see what it does for me. And then I, if, if I like what I see, if, I, if, it's, if it's doing what I think it could do, Maybe I'll suggest it for Bubba. He called us back like three, four weeks later. He's like, this stuff is great. You guys are different from anybody who I've ever spoken to. I'm going to give it to Bubba. So Bubba then took it for four or five weeks. Now, Bubba's conservative, right? And, he, and they were pretty upfront from the beginning. I met with their team at the Masters, and they said, listen, Bubba doesn't add a lot of partners, but he does, he does have an interest in this because it, it, it's really part of his lifestyle, and it could affect his, his performance. And so – Bubba has played a strong role for us in terms of Wall Street. He's played a strong role for us on our wholesale side opening doors. Um, we've also used him in terms of marketing and advertising. We've done with another partner of ours, Lifetime Fitness, 150 clubs around the country, because that audience is also an audience that's into sports, fitness, and golf. So there's different ways we use Bubba. Lolo, Lolo Jones, we use her certainly with Lifetime because she certainly represents sports and fitness. Our barstool relationship, you know, that's a, that's a different crowd for us, um, but it converts incredibly well. Um, so each asset has, has a different purpose within our portfolio. And you are data driven, you know, math driven, which, you know, I found people would ask me what, you know, are some of the secrets to my success. And I always said, I'm, I'm a math guy, including I have an equation, a mathematical equation, even for luck, right? Attention plus intention equals coincidence. Everything to me has to have supporting documentation and, and data behind it. And a lot of people don't know that subjectivity of, of marketing, that 
the successful people in the space like yourself have really done the math work. And it's not just, and I see, you know, a lot of people getting confused on the PR and marketing side by, well, you know, this is an influencer and all we have to do is give Kim Kardashian CBM, CBD MD, have her say, I like it and millions of people are going to buy it. You and I both know why that's not true. And the variable that's so interesting is patience. Uh, and not only externally do we have to, as a public company, have patience of your investors to see everything that builds exponentially and accelerates, but most importantly, I found internally when you're pre-chasm like CBD is, that you have to have patience because the sales uh, and business unit especially and the board, uh, they seem to put a lot of pressure on marketing sometimes, and that artificial pressure can really damage a company how have you been able to, number one, manage the expectations internally that you have, you know, the time to say, hold on, his doctor has to try it for four weeks. Hold on, Bubba has to try. Look, I've been on that position, right? So I know, you know, and I want to know as an entrepreneur, you know, what is that gift to be able to manage the expectation to not only have patience yourself, but to build and manage expectations of patient of the internal pressure of a pre-chasm business that really wants to succeed? Great question, and it's really a different answer depending on 2019 versus uh, 2020. So as I said, 2019 was really the year of accumulation and building the brand and breaking through the clutter. Sales are critical, no doubt. But what 2019 allowed us to do with these assets, and not just our sponsorship assets, and not just our athlete influencers, not just our podcast, not just our ad vendors, all of those allowed us to test some things and see what worked. And you're absolutely right. Conversion for us is critical and the e-commerce side of our business is critical and it continues to grow. And certainly in 2020, e-commerce is even more important for us with everybody kind of stuck at home. Right. Um, but 2019 was really about accumulation and seeing kind of what worked. 2020 is really about, a pathway to prof profitability for our company and honing in on those things that we've learned work in terms of conversion. And we're in a much better position now than we were a year ago, and I suspect others are as well, to make data-driven decisions. Much of what we do has a coupon code attached to it, whether it's a podcast read or whether it's an ad that we run in Lifetime uh, Fitness or a post that we make on social or one of our athletes makes on social, most everything has a code attached to it. And while it's not the only metric we use, we certainly have other metrics that we look at, we're able to pinpoint exactly what is driving traffic to the site, what is driving conversion, and frankly, what is not, or adjustments that we need to make to put us our, put ourselves in a position to be successful. Everything we do is data-driven. And one of the more complex issues that a lot of people don't understand in being a public company, and uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, just like uh, being in a crowded market, I've been a CEO of a public company and you know, putting pressure on my marketing people to somehow intertwine the importance of IR, which is investor relations, not in the respect of moving a stock because we're not going to talk about that and I know you can't, but the biggest ambassadors to a company of purchasing product, telling other people to buy the product, this is not about the stock, about the product, I have always found that's where as a marketer that I wanted my team to make sure that they were addressing who are our investors because those are our ambassadors. Those are free retail locations for us, especially in the digital realm and the digital platform that we sell upon. You know, each of those people on average have a thousand people in their network. You know, and with the multiple to multiple uh, multitudes of investors that you have as an NYC a SC company, you know, there's a huge aggregated asset there. Um, how have you balanced between the SEC and you know our, our regulatory stuff of the SEC and the stock side, but using those investors as ambassadors to market to? Well, I mean, uh, one of my colleagues uh, here at the company, John, he's he's in charge of all of our investor relations. And there's not a day that goes by that I'm not talking to him. Um, and he's not talking to me. And he's not, you know, he's always up to speed on what have we done? What has worked? What hasn't worked? Where are we going next with the brand? 
What's the next partnership? What's the next angle that we're going to take? Now, we, we do take a long-term view, but we certainly have, you know, monthly plans, quarterly plans, et cetera. But we're, we're literally connected at the hip every day, every week. And he's bringing those updates and those stories to our investors. And it's interesting. He comes back with feedback from them questions they have. We actually just did something similar to this a couple of weeks ago, our chairman and I did, uh, Marty and I did, where we actually addressed um, investors for about, boy, it was over an hour, and we were answering all kinds of questions um, that were important to them. And so I mean, it's, it's, even though I'm you know, the, the CMO and I'm constantly focused on marketing, being an NYSE company, the, you know, what we hear from our investors is critical and it's great feedback. Yeah, absolutely. You get that tight engagement and uh, proliferation and acceleration and amplification of what you're trying to do. Now, there's going to be a shakeout in this space. Uh, there's so, so many different people. The accelerated compressed uncertainty that we're in uh, with this uh time has already shaken out some of the players it's also accelerated and exponentially grown brands like yours uh the stronger brands seem to do even better right now than they anticipated uh you are a long-term strategist when it comes to being a cmo how do you see number one cbd playing out in the long run and where does cbd md fit into that long play yeah, I, I think that, and certainly the FDA has to weigh in uh, on the category, but um, and I'm, I'm really bullish on CBD becoming part of the mainstream. Um, and, and when it does, I think we're going to be very, very well positioned. I think we put a nice foundation in place in 2019 um, as a brand. We continue to do so in 2020. Um, I think that as certain doors continue to open up, we'll be well positioned to take advantage of them, um, to, to go mainstream and continue to build the brand. Things like television, um, that has been a little bit of a slow play for the category. Um, but when it does, I think that it'll be a very big boost for the CBD category as we look to go mainstream. And um, I will tell you, we'll be well positioned for that. <laughs> you already are. All right. Last question. You've been such a seasoned marketer throughout the years. And, you know, you and I both have lived probably through 93, 97, 2001, 2008, all types of great times of, uh, let's call it accelerated change. And I would say with great change comes great opportunity. Uh, where do you see for these young entrepreneurs today that may have unique education right now, a unique extern, intern, employment, all types of things are up in the air. Where do you see the best opportunities for the young entrepreneur right now? Where should they be focused? Uh, no, I suppose no surprise, um, but I think it's helpful to come from somebody like myself who's been doing this for, for a long time. Um, and, and frankly, you know, I've learned a lot just, you know, just in, in my time here at CBD MD, but uh, digital and data. You know, the, to me, data, 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 it does, it, information is king. And um, when I tell you that it drives literally every decision we make, at least having access to the data to make smart decisions, of course you use intellect and you use experience and use, you use acumen. Sometimes there's a judgment call on certain things, right? But you want to you ground yourself in data to help make those informed decisions. So to me, um, regardless of the field, information is king, data is king. I agree. The math once again, comes forth, especially the math of luck. So pay attention to Ken Cohn and to CBDMD. Give it your intention. Try it out. Buy it. I promise you it's an all-natural healing solution. I've used it myself. Incredible what it can do in a variety of different ways without any medical representation. Just try it. The best thing you can ever do. Safe and effective. Uh, Ken, I really appreciate all of your experience and you sharing it with everybody. I'm sure it will help them exponentially grow and accelerate their careers. Anything we can do, please let us know. We're big fans, obviously, of you and your company. Thank you for joining me, Dave Meltzer, on Entrepreneurs, The Playbook.